Well, absolutely, schoolwork is most important, and that comes first. And so we had to try to figure out, and it took a little time before I could get it at least to more of a science, but I had to stop and see just how long does it take them to complete their schoolwork. Um, and that helped me also identify how, what they were doing. When you say quantity versus quality, right. were they really getting down to their schoolwork and doing it like they were supposed to, or were they opening a book, going to get a snack, sitting back down again, Can going to get a pencil. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that helped, that whole scheduling helped me identify that because I thought, okay, if you come in at three o'clock and your schoolwork isn't finished until seven, then there's something going on. Either you've got too much homework or you're not focusing on your homework. Right. And so, so those are just little things. I guess it's more or less like testing. In the IT world, we do tests. Mm -hmm. We have to figure out, we go in and we go, we test an, a system or we test an implementation to see how it works, how long it takes to do different things. And that was what I had to sit back and I had to do a, an, an analysis of where, where our time was going. And um, so I would prioritize that way. I would see the schoolwork, how long it was taking the schoolwork, and then I would look at the extracurricular activities. Uh, what extracurricular activities had to be done. So it, it followed a hierarchy, and the schoolwork was, up, well, absolutely first. And then, you know, of course, we had to have enough time before bed. We, we had, at one point, point, we would spend time before bed for devotionals for the children. So we would sit together, and we'd devote an hour before bed to sit together, the three of us, and just sit back and read and then just kind of discuss some of the things that we read. Um, so we, we had to make sure that we had time to do all those things. And then once we prioritized and we look at how many hours we had left in the day mm -hmm. and you determine that, well, it's almost like the Stephen Covey concept. I don't know if you've ever been to some of those with the big rocks. And everybody, I mean, I, I'm so yeah, frankly, yeah, based off it, but yeah. That's about it. and no one uses those anymore. Most people are you know, using their their iPods or their iPhones or oh, those kinds of things. Technology. Yeah, it's excellent. I can actually color code all my kids' schedules, so I just look at the month and there they are. And you see all your colors. Yeah, yeah. it's fantastic. <laughs> it is. But his concept, way before all this technology, his concept was big rocks. And mm -hmm. you hear people throw that that terminology around. Oh, the big rocks, the big rocks. And the, um, the concept was you get you identify what your big rocks are. Mm -hmm. God, your family. Would that be like your big things? The big, so your, your priorities, okay. your main priorities in your life. And, and if you know, that would be God, your family, your work, and then so on and so forth, however you prioritize your life. And then you get the, this, this, he had a jar, and he'd have all these different size pebbles. And there would be the big rocks for the big priorities, and then the little fluff things like I don't know where to go and get a coffee or um, get a manicure or whatever, just I don't know you know, whatever. You, but those are rocks for me. Well, yeah, and and it all depends. Like I said, this, it, I know, sure. but and it all depends on what your priorities right. really are. And and you know, after having children, sometimes when you spend so much time with your children, yeah. you do have to alter your priorities. You really do. Yeah. But. According to his philosophy, if you prioritize, you still have time for those things. Mm -hmm. So you put those things, the big rocks, in the jar first, and you notice how the little ones will find their way in there. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you did it the other way around, the little rocks, put the little rocks in first, the big rocks won't fit. That sounds just like a um, technique I, I heard of too, that you would basically take, they called it a weekly plan sheet. And what <laughs> they would do is you just take an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper and um, you would, um, across, you would have Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then down it would be the hour you woke up mm -hmm. and then when you went to bed. And you would have a box, the Monday slot from five to six, and mm -hmm. then so on and so forth. So each would be an, an individual box. Okay. And first what you would do is you would color in you're solid, I can't change this, I have to be in school this time, or I have to be at work this time. Like, there's no changing when that happens. Okay. So you, you plug those in, the, the unarguables. You can't move those. Then you would make a list of your priorities, like you were saying, identifying your rocks, mm -hmm. and then look at those, and the things that could, like, you would, you can't change what time church is. Yeah. You can't change what time... School is. Yeah, exactly. Work. So you would highlight those in, mm -hmm. and then you would look at your priorities, and then you would start filling them in. And, and what would happen, 95% of the time, you'd be very surprised at how much time you had left, mm -hmm. how much white space you had left for just 
relaxing or doing right. whatever else you feel like, oh, I have no time, I have no time. Exactly. Well, it gives you a reality check of how much time you're spending doing nothing or just shuffling work. back and forth. Yes, just shuffling yeah. papers, getting ready to get ready to get going. Exactly. <laughs> and um, so it reminded me of that too. Yes. Well, speaking of techniques of getting a schedule together, um, first of all, what? How does somebody know that they need to spend time on their schedule? That they really need? What would be a red flag or? just uh, something you would say, hey, that's probably a schedule issue. Mm -hmm. I know, at least in my family, sometimes, um, just an example, I'll get most frustrated with my kids. Mm -hmm. If I step back and really take, I'll get frustrated. I'm like, oh, stop that, stop that, and I'll get annoyed or whatever. Yeah. But really what's happening is I'm trying to do something or I'm trying to accomplish something at an inappropriate time. Mm -hmm. They need my attention and I'm trying to like check my email. Or, you know, it's like I just need to step away yes. <laughs> from what I'm trying to accomplish and say, okay, there's a better time for this. Mm -hmm. And on the surface, I could say, oh, they're just not obeying me. And I think that's the issue. But if I'm really honest with the situation, I know it's a schedule issue. Yeah. That I need to not check my email right before dinner. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> check it after they go to sleep. Um, what are some other things that, that you would consider red flags that would say, hey, this is a schedule issue, probably not something else? Well, and you made a... You made a fine point because um, someone once said, Once you, when you're older, you're not going to look back and regret that you didn't spend more time at work. You're not going to look back and regret that you didn't spend more time running back and forth to the store. But the things that you will regret is not spending time with your family and doing mm -hmm. those things, those quality things. Um, and so for me, uh, as you mentioned, when I realized I was in the car one day and I remember it was the strangest thing. I'm driving along mm -hmm. and my son's in the back seat and he's talking to me, and my mind was so focused on something else that had occurred during that day, or maybe thinking about something else that I was planning for work mm -hmm. or whatever, but it wasn't, it wasn't more important than my son. But I remember him talking, and I remember hearing this voice in a dream state in my mind, and, but I was so focused on this thought that I had, uh, and then finally I snapped out of it, and I heard him, he, was, he kept repeating my name, and it was almost like a dream. And I had to remember, he was in the back seat talking to me. Yeah. And I thought, you know, reality I, check. <laughs> reality yeah. check. You really need to stop yeah. and just refocus. And mm -hmm. that was one of the main things that told me, you're, you're overloaded. You need to stop and you need to refocus. Uh, and another thing was, I had gone through a spell where I found that when I left for work, I would have to always double back because I would forget something. And it was because I was moving too fast I think I have and rushing. <laughs> <laughs> and so finally I said, you know what? Something's wrong here. You're not prioritizing. You're not using your time appropriately. You need to stop and focus. Um, and when you don't have time to spend with your children and sit down with them and have quality time with them, mm -hmm. then you need to refocus. When you can't gather your things and, and be a little more organized, and, I, and everybody's not super uber organized, and I know that, but there's there's a certain there's a certain art to knowing and having all your tools ready and, yeah. and being ready to go for the day. So it's and when you have to continue, can be learned. yeah, I We're think not so. Yeah. About Making an A personality be a B personality. No, this is not. This or is or making this is, a B personality an A personality. Ax, right. This is just learn like how you learn to ride a bike. Exactly. This is not nature. This is nurture. Exactly. Okay. Good. <laughs> so. We're, we're learning everyone can learn this. Yeah, this you can, is, if you want to. <laughs> I think it's yeah. one of those things, if you, if you want to, if it's, mm -hmm. if it's a need for you, if it's a priority, if you find, you feel like your life is, is on a runaway train, mm -hmm. then I think at some point you need to stop and look at what am I doing yeah. that I could rearrange? How can I rearrange things a little bit so I'm getting the better use of my time? Okay. Um, and for me, um, and maybe sometimes it comes to it maturity too. When you get a little older, you stop, you look back and you think, you know what? Some of that stuff I was spending so much time on, I could have reshuffled those things and done things a little differently. Right. And, I, and I, I think that scheduling really does help you focus, prioritize, and really gives you a reality check on how right. you're spending your time and what your most important things are. 
Yeah. So now that we have had a sufficient reality check yeah. about our daydreaming <laughs> and our email checking, yeah. what do we now, do now? Now, there's nothing wrong with having yeah. a daydream every now I and then. I, I will not take that from I you. Do. I've done this 